Hey, welcome to the AL.com Film Room. I'm Matt Scalisi here with John Parker Wilson, our Alabama football analyst. We're going to be taking a look at some plays from Alabama's win over Southern Miss from this weekend. John Parker, uh, we went into this game with still more uncertainty at the quarterback position for Alabama, but after watching the game, I think it's pretty clear that there's probably a, a front runner at this point. I would definitely say so. I think we learned a lot. Uh, we learned a lot who I think the quarterback is going to be next week and also I think about what kind of offense we're going to run. Blake Sims did a good job of coming out, handling the team, handling the offense, moving the ball and scoring points, which as a quarterback is your ultimate job. I think he, he played well. He's getting better each week. You can see his maturation, his growth process as a quarterback, and he just continues to get better and continues to move the ball. Well, let's take a look at some of Blake Sims' plays from, uh, from Saturday's win. Maybe look at some things he's doing well right now, some things where he needs to improve a little bit. Definitely. We'll, we'll show his running ability, his throwing ability, and just kind of get into it and see what he's doing well and kind of what he can work on in the future. All right, we're going to start off with a, a look at a play in the second quarter here. Uh, Blake Sims has got a, a third and ten and ends up making a big play with his feet here. Let's take a look. All right, so it's third and ten right here, and we just crossed the 50-yard line. Uh, a long third down yardage that you want to stay out of, but Blake Sims does a good job of – addressing what's down the field, moving in the pocket, and then escaping for the first down. So we'll see right here, he takes a snap, and his eyes are downfield good. He's got the reads, he gets a slight rush, and just slowly moves in the pocket. He doesn't panic, pulls it down, and then I think the biggest thing right here is when he gets the ball out of the pocket, he looks like a wide receiver or a running back running. He doesn't look like a quarterback. He doesn't look to get out of bounds and just get the 10-yard gain, but instead he cuts back upfield and turns it into a 20-yard gain. It's a huge, huge ability for him to do this, and those extra yards, yards after the run, is just what's going to be big for Alabama and moving those chains and moving the ball. Okay, well, let's take a look now at his, uh, his touchdown run in the second quarter earlier in the game. Um, you know, a little bit of confusion here before the snap. Let's, let's uh, take a look and, and see what you think is happening here. So you can see Blake trying to get the play from the sidelines, and he gets it from Coach Kiffin or whoever signaled the ball. He goes through his, his first play. They decide to change it, so he, he calls the second play with a, with a signal. Uh, takes a snap right here and looks to pass first. You can tell it's a down-the-field pass. He sees the guy's not open, pulls it down, gets a good seal block, and just runs it in. But I like the run, uh, the, the run pass option right here that gives him more than one choice. He can throw the ball or he can run it. Decides to pull it down right here and run it for the touchdown. And how valuable is that when you're, when you're in the red zone, especially just to have that as an, as an available option? To you? It's really nice. It moves the pocket. It takes a little pressure off the offensive line so we can, we can look downfield um, or – and avoid a, a, a bad play. I think right here he can really – he can throw it, he can run it. There's a lot of different things he can do, and his feet really set up everything. So another thing that we saw from Blake Sims on the ground this week, we, we've seen it in previous seasons but haven't seen it this season so far, uh, running the, the zone read uh, in the red zone here. Just talk about that uh, and, and seeing that as part of the Alabama offense. Yeah, it, very nice to see. Just a little wrinkle, one play that we've seen all season, but I think it's going to give the Florida coaches a headache this week. They're going to have to prepare for it. They're going to have to work on it during practice and in film. So I think just showing this one play, whether they run it or not, is going to prove big the next week. Hopefully we can work on the game plan, have, have the option, and then maybe, maybe a runoff of it like we see some other teams in, in the league doing. But I think it's a big part of our game moving forward. All right, well, let's talk about his, his passing ability. Uh, you know, had, had a pretty good showing again this weekend, especially when it comes to connecting with his favorite receiver, really uh, probably every Alabama fan's favorite receiver right now, Amari Cooper. Yeah, game plan number one is to get number nine the ball. As many touches as, as Amari can get, the better for, for the offense and for the whole team just moving forward. Um, I think right here we see the first play that we, that we saw last week. It's the same exact play. We've got a, a Blake coming back, a hard play action, gets the linebackers to come up in the box again, and he throws, he throws a ball to Amari, the deep crosser, just like last week. I think the only thing the coaches would probably tell him here and to coach on him uh, moving forward is I think he hung on to the ball a little, little too long. He's still trying to see everything come up and develop, um, trying to see it just a little too clean. I think if he can get the ball to Amari a little faster, a little quicker, that'll give him more space um, and, and a better chance to make a move on the secondary and get more yards going down. A couple more plays from uh, Amari Cooper and Blake Sims hooking up here. Let's, let's keep talking about these. So this is just continuing this, this first drive of the second half. Uh, we see a play that we saw a lot this game, and I think a lot moving forward, is the play-action bootleg. Uh, we have a play action to the left. He comes back to the right and really throws a good ball on the run, a deep comeback, which is uh, one of the tougher passes to throw on the run. They do a good job of hooking up and, and getting the first down, moving the chains. 
And then another play is the, the deep ball that got reviewed to, to Amari. I think the first time we've seen this as well as just taking a shot downfield, one-on-one coverage, we're going to throw the ball to Amari and, and, and try, to, try to let him make a play. He does it. He does a great job of getting his foot in. But this is just the continued chemistry of, of Blake and, and Amari and the rest of the receivers moving forward is he's just finding these guys, finding these one-on-one matchups that'll, that'll, that'll be able to win and taking advantage of it. And, and how much of that starts to improve over the season for, for most quarterbacks in terms of that timing, you know, where, where you're maybe, as you said, with that first play that we looked at, just, just taking one extra second off of how long it takes for that, for that route to develop, basically. Yeah, it, the more you do it, the better. The more live bullets you get out here with, with, with against first-team defenses on their side, the better. I think we could see, see him getting better and better. The play to Amari, the, the fade ball that gets reviewed is, is a big indicator to me because he has the trust to go out there. You know, he might have had reads on, on the other side of the field, but sees him, keys him, and, and goes and gets in the ball. That's all we've got for today on the AL.com Film Room. Join us later this week where we're going to preview Alabama's game against Florida and take a look at a couple of Alabama's biggest concerns heading into the weekend.